a lot of people must have made this mistake or are planning to make this mistake the mistake that i made so i'm trying to share with you guys so you're not going to make the same mistake that i made okay so um relax as i take you through the journey a story of my life <laughs> guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl unique elijah will be one day back on your screen and hola hola to all our first timers in the house woo, 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 woo. five posers for you thank you for coming and uh, i would really appreciate if you join this wonderful family by subscribing in this channel it's all about good vibes good vibes so we share a lot of informations informations that are going to be helpful to you especially for those of you that are planning to jab ah, jab ah, <laughs> applying to the study in the united states through the student visa route because that's the part i'm talking about i'm sharing my whole experience if you've been following my video for the past one month you figure out that we've been talking about the my visa interview you know the tips the documents you need to prepare if you're scheduled for a vs a visa interview an f1 visa interview so i've been sharing a lot of information on this channel that's going to be helpful to you so please if you watch if you've not watched our previous videos after watching this video i would advise i'll suggest you go back and watch some of our videos i'm sure you're going to get one or two informations that are going to be beneficial to you all right so without further ado to my returning subscribers, thank you, thank you guys very much for always coming back. To my OGs, are you guys now? Now that they make my shoulder raise now. <laughs> all right, so from the caption below, you already know what this video is all about. This is actually something I want to share with you guys in case for some people that are planning to come. I don't want you to make the same mistake I made, the mistake that nearly ruined everything for me. So, um. If this is what you want to watch, I want you to just keep watching, okay? Don't touch that dial. All right, guys, welcome back. Story time. All right, so my story started, my journey started when I got my F1 visa approved on the 11th of January, 2023. So, um, uh, bearing in mind that Qatar just held the fifa world cup during december november through december or i think september through november 2022 so because of the um world cup and everything when we were trying to schedule for our visa interview because we wanted it to come earlier because our school was supposed to resume january 10th so we we're trying to get a visa interview dates that was closed at least around december so we could know our status and prepare ourselves to leave before school or classes starts at on the 10th of january so but because of the world cup and everything so almost all the interviews were moved to january which made us actually you know have some kind of delay okay so after we we scheduled for our interview. The date, the closest date we had was that 11th, and already is already encroaching to our my start time because I was supposed to resume school on the 10th of January. So after our visa, we went for our interview on the 11th. Now, mind you that your visa, your you getting a visa interview appointment does not automatically mean that you're going to get approved so we couldn't do much we couldn't like start preparing ourselves or start selling off our properties back in qatar because we were leaving all of those behind so we couldn't do all of that because we needed to be sure if we are if we are going to get the visa before we start making arrangements to move right so all of that delayed so when we finally eventually got our visa on the 11th so we had to start planning on our movements trying to sell off our stores our car you know properties get ourselves together so 
before we could do all of that we couldn't like wrap it up and still resume school so by the time we were done we were able to travel 2nd of february and school already has gone like two three weeks and you coming into a new place trying to settle down trying to you know do a lot of things at the same time so it was a lot it was kind of choky for me so i was like okay immediately we landed we came into the united states february 2nd no, that was when we left i think we came in third of february so that's like three weeks later after school resumed so i told my husband that uh, ah i can't like resume school immediately i need time to like sink in like get you know i, I wanted to defer my admission to start um summer instead of spring because i was supposed to start for the spring session so we now agreed okay that i'm going to defer my admission so when we got into the united states i went to the school to report that oh i am here now but i was, I was i went to meet them so i can tell them my plans of deferment that i wanted to defer my admission because I want to start the next semester because I need time and all of that. So, unfortunately, when we got to the school, normally I was supposed to meet my DSO. My DSO is, is the one that is responsible for me, for all international students. You have a DSO that is assigned to you, designated officer that takes care of your everything, you know. Your stay in the United States is subject to your dso like she is the one responsible or he or she is the one responsible for your stay as a student in the united states so i came to school to meet my dso and she was not on seat because that was on a friday and she was not on seat so they they now had to refer us to the graduate studies department because i'm doing my graduate studies okay so they they kind of referred us to the graduate studies department excuse me because they said oh okay since you're a graduate study and you're trying to defer you go miss them they're going to tell you what to do um what and what is required we said okay so we went straight to the graduate studies and we met someone there and uh after we met the person um we told the person oh look 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 we want to defy this that that we just kept waiting in a hotel at that time we were still lodging in a hotel we didn't have a place and everything so i just explained to him that i need time to like absorb everything before i can start school and everything so he was like okay that he was going to he was going to reach out to my dso and uh, they are going to dso will be the one to decide if i'm allowed to, to defer or not so that uh, but it's okay that he's, he can it's something that we can do i asked i wanted to even defer to august but he said no defer deferring to august might really mean that i will have to leave to the united states and come back and i didn't want that so i said okay when it's gonna be okay for me to defer he said okay i can defer to the next semester which was summer i said okay sounds like a good plan so i i gave him my my uh, um admission number and everything so he put everything in place and said okay that i should email him on monday that once he gets approval from my dso then they can go ahead and go ahead with the deferment i said okay we were still in the hotel we stayed in the hotel for like five days so on monday i sent him an email and i'm like okay sir this is a follow-up on my request to defer my admission blah 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 what's the status am i able to defer or not he now said oh you're good you're i've already adjusted your 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 admission status i've adjusted your admission to summer so you're good and i asked if my dso approved it and everything because they all work together kind of he now said yeah i'm good everything is fine i said do i need to do anything it was for me it was 
it was too good to be true right like it was so easy i know at the foreign admission i didn't fill up any form i like i was like it can't be that easy but he said oh you're fine because at that time it was the head of um graduate studies you know and everything so i said okay but something in me was like oh okay since he said it's fine and i we had to say okay fine since i've defer i've been able to defer till summer so we had to travel to north carolina that was where we were staying we we got a place in north carolina if you saw a video i posted earlier my house tour in charlotte so we were my style of stays there so she helped us secure an apartment there so we moved there so the plan was okay when school resumes i'm gonna come back here in alabama and do my school thing when my husband is in charlotte because he had something he was doing in charlotte so that was like sounded like a good plan so that was what we ha what happened and i we went back to um charlotte on tuesday so when we got there i was just oh, it was still not entering my body but then and i didn't bother to like make researches and this because i'm gonna still i'm responsible for it because i'm supposed to make researches you know before doing anything or i was supposed to contact my dso to make sure that i had okay my dso okayed me to you know try um to defer so long story short um summer was supposed to start by may so around after i did that department in february around march or april i got an email from the same person from the graduate studies department saying that i needed to withdraw from my classes that i they just adjusted my department but i will be the one to withdraw if not accounts departments they're going to charge me it's going to be assumed that i was still in school or i still took the summer classes because i already registered for the classes before i deferred so he said i needed to withdraw from the classes so i won't get charged for a class session i did not attend so i said okay i went he put, helped me told me where to go and how to withdraw from the classes and everything so i withdrew from the classes for me to now register again during summer when i'm actually attending the classes okay so i did that around um summer session was supposed to start by may around april march april i had to now write my around april i wrote my dso i sent her an email that oh now i want to start i wrote the the man for the head of uh, graduate studies i wrote him an email say oh i want to start registering for summer because i knew that once it was may if I, during ap april registration for summer was open so i said okay i need to start early to register and everything so that was what i i sent email to them <laughs> as i sent that email to the man and i sent email to my dso and I asked, okay, do I need a new I-20 or anything? You know, I already sent that email and I didn't get a response for my DSO. So something came up, you know, that I won't have to be going into. But someone made a comment like, oh, you're out of status. So this one, that one, I had it from someone. I'm like, okay, that was when I now panicked. So I now had to... Um, follow up with my school and i wrote my dso i had to call call everybody i was calling 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 before i was able to get through her hmm. she now responded to my email that she has checked my a number and uh, he was trying to check with my service that it appears that my service has been terminated that is my visa my f1 visa status that has been terminated hey 
<laughs> I said, Jesus Christ. My village people, oh, when I see follow me come America, when I follow me come America, I said, what? My head, like, it was, I had to book flights the next day down to Alabama. Hmm. When I got here, I'm like, what am I going to do? I came before I I met them and they said I could defer. He said she was not aware that I did not contact her. I said, ah, but I met someone. They said, they say that's not that I should have contacted my TSO before even deferment and everything. And that brings me to this. If you're coming to the United States to study, and for whatever reason, after getting your visa, you feel that, oh, you want to defer your admission. Like, you don't want to start the same time that you're supposed to start. Now, look at what you have to do. While you, as, you have not entered the United States, write your school and tell them that you are trying to defy your admission that you cannot start that session and you tell them the session you want to start they will have to send you a new i20 hold your ear they have to send you a new i20 now you're going to fill up that i20 and send it back to your dso once that is done then your new i20 will state the time your new school session is going to start. So you're not allowed to enter the United States earlier than the time your school is supposed to start. I think you cannot enter. The earliest you can enter is one month before your school session starts. If you enter the United States and you now say you want to come and defer, you are going you're you're going you're, you're jeopardizing your visa status now look at what happens the problem i had was if you come into the united states once they have stamped you in you have once your school section starts you have 10 days after the school starts to do your service registration now your service students they call it student exchange of information right if you if you do not if you didn't feel your do your service registration after you enter they are going to assume homeland security are going to assume that you are you have come to the united states and you have sconded so you're no longer you're not going to the school that you say you want to come to the united states united states to do they are going to cancel they will terminate your status as a student now you are now illegal in the united states you that have two years visa that two years visa becomes invalid why because your status has been terminated you're no longer in the system as a legal a legal alien because non-immigrant visas, they call them alien visas. So you, you are no longer legal. So anything will make you go into problem or whatever, you're going to be deported because your status has been terminated. And that was my case. <laughs> so as my TSO told me that, oh, my status has been terminated though, this one, that one, I'm like, what? So what is my what are my options? Now, I had two options. One was to exist the United States and come back. Or I have to apply for reinstatement. Now, this will be me dealing with immigration directly, US, US CIS. Now, if I agree to exit and come back, my school is going to, I'm going to work with my school. My DSO will just issue me a new I-20 and I'm going to use that new I-20. My visa is still valid because I have two years visa. So all I need to do is to check for countries around, countries like Mexico that does not require extra visa. If you have American visa, you can enter Mexico, right? So 
I had to exit. My school will give me a new I-20. I will pay a new service fee. Remember I told you I paid three fifty for your service fee. So I have to pay a new because that service that I entered with has become terminated. So it's longer, it's no longer valid. So that three fifty I paid, three fifty dollars I paid is is no longer valid. So I had to pay a new one, get a new service, get a new I-20, exit the United States, stay for like three, four days, and come back with your new I-20. That's how you're going to be reinstated. Or you apply for reinstatement with US, uh, USCIS. Now, the problem with applying for reinstatement is this. It can take them six months to respond to you. So when you apply, and if you give reason, we no food their belly. After like six months or one year, and they review your case and feel that your excuse is not valid, they are going to reject your reinstatements, and that amounts to automatic deportation. Automatic deportation. Hey. I was that day I went to the woman's office. I was crying. I said, But this person told me this. This person told me that at the end of the day, you are responsible as a student. You should make sure that whatever decision you're taking as an international student, you should, you by yourself, need to be in contact with your DSO. They call designated student officer. She is the one. That is designated to give you any information that you know any information that has to do with your stay in the United States. Hey, hmm. That day I cried. I told my husband, "Look at, look at, look at." We we're like, and I'm telling you that we just had like one week before summer school starts. So we had one week to book a ticket, exit the United States go to mexico or any other country around come back before school starts or classes starts if you if you watch my videos you see that i made videos of my cancun vacation and everything my sister <laughs> that vacation it was just me making as life give me lemon i made lemonade out of it because that vacation on normal day i not suppose we did not plan for the yes we're going to go for we like going on vacations but that was impromptu like we didn't plan for that we just got into the united states so i was devastated i cried i said god god like how will i explain this after getting your visa you're you're terminated and deported for what I don't want to be the, I don't want to be in the United States and become stay illegally and whatever. I didn't want that. So I took the option of going to Mexico. That was how we went on that impromptu Cancun vacation. So I was like, ah, okay. Since we are here already, we're already on the vacation. Let's make the most out of it. I had to like make vlogs and everything. But girl, in that trip your girl was scared because we wanted to travel hey people were like hey if you leave the net they will not let you come back or this one that one no like i'm telling you you always always research know your onions get your information from direct sources leave the words in the streets people will say what they've heard or what they feel but always make your own research. Because I went through, my DSO sent me from the website, from the Homeland Security. Oh, if you if this happens to you, look at what you're supposed to do. If this, like, but people are saying, if you exit, this one, that one, you're going to come back, you're, you're not going to come back. Like, a lot of things were going on. I'm like, hi, God. So now I'm using this, my experience, to serve as a lesson to a lot of people that are planning to come to the United States or any other place, especially I'm talking about the United States because that's where I am. You want to come and study and you come and you defer, except you want to be, you have another plan. Because if your plan is to come here and study and make your ways and, you know, make a living for yourself or anything, you need to be in status. So guys, as we enter, like I said, 
the immigration guy asked us to go and sit one side. Ha! In my mind, I was like, Kai, my village people have succeeded. Ah, they have succeeded. So after he attended to two people, he now said, okay, come, 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 come. There was a mistake. Because, you know, the, the, the I-20, the I-20 that I used to enter first is different from the one I came with. So, and the, the service number in my passport is the previous one, but that one is no longer valid because that was the one, the service number he entered, which was showing out of status. Only for me to not tell him that, oh, we made a new, this one. And I now gave him my documents for the new service number. He now punched it and now saw that we were still in status. That was how we crossed in and came back into the United States. And I had to start my classes during summer. So guys, what's the moral lesson of this video? I'm trying to, because a lot of people make this mistake because they're not informed. If you're coming into the United States as a student and your visa has been issued and your I-20 is saying you're supposed to start spring, if for anything you don't, you don't feel like starting the spring or you want to defer, you have to do your deferment outside the United States. Don't come into the United States and now say you want to defer. That's a breach on your F1 status. You are trying to violate your status and that's going to warrant it can result to you getting your status being terminated, your status being removed, and you might, it might result to you being deported back to your country. So please, don't make that mistake. If you want to defer, you already have your visa after you've gotten your visa. If you've gotten your visa, your visa is valid for two years. So even if you, want, if you don't want to start that semester, you want to start the next semester, as long as your visa is still valid, anytime you're ready to start, write your school to give you a new i20 stating what you, what you want to start when that time reach you can enter with your visa then if you need more time you can the law will call visa renewal renewal and everything so please please and please don't make the same mistake i made do not make the same mistake do not come into the united states and now defer you were going to your status will be terminated. That was what happened to me. It was after we had to exit and come, and that was when we were rinsed. Our status became we had to we now had to get a new service information, just a new one because the old one was already invalid, it was terminated, and nothing could be done about it. So I hope you've learned one or two from this my video from this my experience so if you want anything else any information you want to know about the student visa route to the united states if you have any questions any doubt any uncertainties that you feel i can help you out with is there any other thing you want me to talk about concerning our f1 visa status and everything if there's anything you want me to talk about kindly let me know in the comment section i'm going to make a video to that effect Alright, so thank you guys very much for watching this video up until now. You guys are the real MVPs. And if you've not subscribed yet up to this moment, tell me what are you waiting for? Don't you like what you see on this channel? Don't you like the positivity? Please do us well to subscribe, you know, like this video if you like it, share to people so they can learn from my mistake. Don't be like me. Don't do that mistake I did. A lot of people don't know this. If I didn't make that mistake and that almost me in trouble if i didn't make that mistake i wouldn't know about this so that's why i've taken it upon myself to sensitize people inform them look at look at this visa route is is something that is very delicate the slightest mistake you're going to make can result to very grave consequences okay thank you guys very much for watching again i'll see you in our next video for now your girl, Unique Elijah, signing out. <laughs>